uh, you know, once I took this job at, at Pearl Site, the, my the time I spent coding went way down. So um, we, one, of the, one of the nice things, though, is that every quarter, uh, as part of the corporate culture, we do what we call a hack day. Is anyone familiar with this concept? No? So um, a lot of companies do, are doing this now, uh, Netflix. Uh, in particular, like a lot of the innovations you see coming out of Netflix are just employees doing stuff on Hack Day. And the idea is that um, uh, you, know, you, you take a day off of your normal duties and um, you know spend spend that time working on a project that uh, you think is going to benefit the company in some way, right? And and sort of you just sort of form ad hoc teams and get stuff done. So you, like I usually end up working on two or three of these teams, you know, and then I'll be doing stuff on my own as well since I'm remote. Um, but I, like at the last hack day we had, like I, I developed the stuff you're seeing um, today uh, and you know, other, other teams developed like a lot of uh, data systems and, and stuff like that. So it was just, you know, like everything from user experience to marketing efforts to, to anything else. Um, so here, here's the problem, right? Um, I joined this team uh, the curriculum team at Pluralsight, and and they're overtooled. I mean, that's in the sense that like they use Trello for some things, right? We also use uh, we use Salesforce. Is anyone familiar with Salesforce? Yeah, I hate Salesforce. I really do. But the sales guys and everybody love it, and I don't know why. Um, but I mean, I don't have a business mind. I really don't. So I, I I'm not gonna you know I'm not gonna complain. But um, but the, uh, you know, so they use Salesforce for a lot of stuff. Uh, we also use something called Smartsheet. I don't know if you're familiar with that. It's an online spreadsheet. It's really powerful. <laughs> um, you know, the, the problem is we have data crammed everywhere now, right? And so when you, when you want to, like, when you're talking to an author, like, for example, part of my job, when I'm talking to an author and they're asking, like, well, I want to do a, you know, a course on, uh, I don't know, uh, you know, SSIS in the cloud and Azure Data Factory. What do you guys have going on in that space? Uh, hang on a second, and I got to open up like all this crap and all these browser windows uh, to to try to do that. So, um, so it's not ideal, right? I mean, the tools are great. Like Trello is great. Anyone use Trello? Highly recommend it. Yeah, it's dirt simple, just works. Um, that's what I have up on the on the screen right now. Uh, this, you know, so the the idea of Trello is just a task tracking system, uh, and there's actually there's a Chrome extension called Toggle that will add like a little Pomodoro timer uh, to Trello, which is really handy. But yeah, so I mean, like this is my to-do board, and I've got stuff on there that I need to do, stuff that's in progress, um, stuff that I've done, stuff that I've just abandoned, uh, and it's just a way for me to keep track of the things that need to get done. Uh, we have, you know, we have other ones. I'm not going to show them to you, just out of you know respect for my my company. Um, but like we manage everything pretty much on these Trello boards. We, you know, our proposals go through the, them as part of the pipeline. Uh, auditions when new authors come in, um, everything from you know, like even uh, our, our newsletter topics. You know, when we get an idea, we just throw it up on the Trello board. Uh, so it's a it's a very often used tool. Um, but and and so you know, like Salesforce is kind of the same thing. You know, when we, we have conversations with authors, we got to go into Salesforce and update those fields and make sure that, that everybody knows what's going on with this guy and his course and uh, etc. Uh, so what I did for Hack Day. Um, and like you can imagine the problems, right? I mean, I don't have to explain to you that, like, yeah, when you're updating data in three places, that sometimes one of those places doesn't get updated, and so you got if you ask where you look, you get like false positives or false negatives, um, and there's just a lot of misinformation floating around. So, uh, one of the things that I wanted to do was to create sort of a common way to access all that data. I'm not calling this like the like we call it, we're look like internally we call it the one tool that we're looking for that will solve this problem for us. You know, that's not what this is. This is really just me hacking some crap so that I don't have to bounce around all day long trying to pull information from different sources. I can actually go to one place and 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 pull that stuff out. Um, so just to give you an idea uh, of what I did, I'm just going to give you a really quick demo. Um, so I you know I PowerShell open and you know so here I have my to do board right uh, on Trello. Uh, and I have um, uh, I have PowerShell open now. And one of the things that I did was I created a Trello module for PowerShell that would actually let me connect to my Trello account uh, and pull down uh, the boards. So I'm going to import my Trello module. I have to spell it right. All right. Um, and just to give you an idea of what this thing can do. Uh, so. 
like I can get the list of boards. I can I can get the list, or I can get the boards. I can get the lists on the boards, the cards in a list, the actions that have been taken on a card. I can create a new board, uh, which is very exciting. Uh, create a new Trello card. So, um, like if I do a, a get uh, Trello board, uh, it's going to return a mess of stuff, right? There's a whole bunch of data that comes back. Uh, and again, you know, like this is just a hack. There's no formatting, so it's not pretty. So let me pretty it up for you. Like if I do a select, um, we'll do ID and name. Uh, yeah, so the, these are all the boards that I have access to. And you can see like near the bottom, there's my to-dos list. Um, so uh, like I'm actually able to go in there and I can pull the court, the, the, uh, the, uh, the cards off of there too. I can say, okay, uh, find the Trello board where the uh, name matches to do Oops. or match, excuse me. All right, so again, I'm, now I'm just using regular PowerShell semantics to filter that data that's coming back from the Trello API. Uh, and if I want the Trello cards, I can do like the get Trello card. Right, and it'll actually pull all the cards down from that board so I can look at the data that's in them. Um, so I, I do this kind of stuff quite frequently, like with the proposal board. You know, the question comes up, do you have anything in the pipeline around, I don't know, Angular? Well, yeah, probably. I probably don't have to check for that one, actually. But uh, like a good one is Bimmel, right? There's a, a, a ETL uh, thing from a company called Veragence named Bimmel, and we're just now starting to percolate courses out on it. Uh, so when a question comes up about it, I, I can pull down the, the proposal board and look in there and see if we, you know, what do we have going on that's got the word Bimmel in it, right? Uh, which actually is a lot easier to do on the console than it is to come in here, right, and, and actually look at the, uh, look at this board and try to figure it out on my own. Um, you know, Trello, the, the UI in Trello does have this, uh, this filter feature. Where is it? Uh, it? But it's kind of atrocious, right? It, it's actually, it's a literal string that you have to match like the beginning of, and so if you don't know how the string starts, and it just doesn't work. Um, but you know, if I pull the pull the cards down in PowerShell now, all of a sudden I can I can um, you know I can filter on them. Like if I'm like okay, well, um, I don't even know what they look like, so let me pipe them to get member and see what fields we're working with. Um, Good question. Yeah, go ahead. So at this point, what what you're you know because you don't like the interface of Trello, you decided to write. You know, a module that will get you the same data from there. What REST API and yeah, from there. Yeah. So and, and yeah, that's the, the next step of the conversation is how this works, right? And mm -hmm. so that is, um, let's talk about the REST API. Um, and the big part of that is authentication, right? I don't know if any of you are familiar with the the OAuth technology, but a lot of APIs are using that now because everything's on the web, right? Including your client, obviously. That's you know, which isn't true with PowerShell. So we we got to kind of be creative to get around that. Um, yeah, so anyway, and you know, I'm, I'm not going to blabber on Trello, but you know, I can do the same thing with Salesforce to, um, uh, and you know, I can search uh, Salesforce. Uh, let's see, what do I want? I want, um, we call them accounts. I want an account, and I'm going to filter the account where the name is like uh, Jim. And it should bring up me along with everybody else. But uh, you can see that it's actually trying to authenticate, and it's not going to because I, I forgot to do something. Um, but let me show you what that looks like, too. Okay, first off. Is that, is that still readable in the back? Yeah, all right. Well, yeah, I'm just. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so let me support Salesforce. All right, did I close that one? Yeah. Um, what was it? Search. Oops. Search Salesforce and ugh. the object type I want is an account, and the filter I want to search on is um, name is like Jim. Uh, let's go ahead and return the top 10. Uh, so I haven't connected to Salesforce yet, and God willing, this will actually work because um, it is kind of spotty. But you see, it, it's actually going out to Salesforce and saying, I need to connect. There it goes. So um, it goes out to Salesforce, does the OAuth authentication with Salesforce. 
comes back and you know we'll talk about how OAuth works in a second, but bottom line is you need your own web server running to have OAuth be able to authenticate uh, with your local client. So it comes back, does the authorization, and then if I go back to PowerShell, it's actually working. And I can, now that I'm authenticated, I can do the same thing. Um, uh, give me a name, guys. Bob. Right, there's all of our authors with the word Bob. And so, um, so that, that was actually the, the really tricky part, was, was sort of digging into OAuth. I mean, I've done, I'm a developer, I've done OAuth before, um, but again, it's always been like with, uh, with a web-based thing, like my server's talking to their server, so I've got a web page that I can use the user to you know, direct them over there and come back. It's just, it's just a mess. Um, right, who's not familiar with OAuth, by the way, just because I want you guys to appreciate how freaking difficult this was. <laughs> uh, all right, so do you guys know like when you go to a website and they say, hey, look, you want to log on with Facebook or Google or whatever? That's OAuth, basically. It, it's a way for, um, it's a way for one web server to sort of pass your, or receive credentials um, and identity information from another entity, another web server, and to do so in a secure fashion. And what it basically amounts to is configuration on both ends, right? So like when I, when I, you know, I can authenticate with Salesforce because I've gone into Salesforce and said, I have this client that's gonna authenticate with you. Um, you know, here's a secret I'm gonna pass you to make that, make that happen. And in response, Salesforce, you know, I, I've given it a URL to go back to to finish the authentication. So like, there's this kind of like handshake between the two servers. Uh, they know how to talk to each other, right? Um, and again, you know, when you're in PowerShell, you don't have a web server that's just sitting there, uh, typically. So I had to I had to roll something, um, right? So let's start looking at, at some code. Um, the uh, the Trello one's actually pretty easy. Let me open up the um, the Salesforce one. Uh, no, not yet. Um, I, I don't know if we're going to do anything with it, but uh, but yeah, generally speaking, this code is is property of Pluralsight. So, um, but they don't they don't care. Like this isn't their business crucial things. These are literally like the hack that Jim did. So. Um, so let's talk about authentication first, right? Um, uh, so like if I do, we'll start, with, let's actually do kind of like a trace of what I did. So you know, I, I typed search Salesforce. Uh, this is the function that got called uh, when I did that. And, and if we look at what it does, um, which is, I haven't looked at it in a while, but um, basically it's kind of parsing out the parameters and piecing together a query string. Uh, right? Salesforce has like a very SQL-like uh, query syntax for, it, for its stuff. Uh, and then uh, when I'm ready to, when I have the query all configured right here, uh, I, I calculate the URL or I, I build up this URL. And again, you know, how do I know what that URL was? There's a reams of documentation behind any of these APIs, Trello or Salesforce or anything. Uh, and it's all in there. So um, I just go in there and I format the URL correctly. Uh, and then I call this, this ubiquitous function, get Salesforce object, and I, I pipe the URL to it. Um, and if you look at get Salesforce object, which I just lost my place, there it is. Uh, when you look at get Salesforce object, um, uh, it, the, the core of it, it's just calling the invoked rest method, uh, when you know, it's part of the core API and, and power, poor commandlet, core commandlet uh, library of PowerShell just includes this, right? So uh, I can pass it the URI I wanna, I wanna hit uh, as a rest interface and tell it what authorizations I wanna pass in in the headers, and it just works, right? In theory, it just works. Um, the real trick, right? So, um, like the way I'm authenticating with Salesforce with this request, right? It doesn't know who I am. HTTP is stateless, so when I make the request, um, the server's like, I don't know who you are, so I've gotta give it something to identify myself, and it, it actually, it's this little thing we put in the headers, and again, this is part of the OAuth spec. Um, uh, it's an authorization header. And uh, in this case, for Salesforce, it's the word bearer and then some token it gave me in the past. Um, and that's, that's the trick. How do I get that token? And that's, that's part of that whole OAuth authentication process. Which, and this is where things just get weird, all right? So I have this get Salesforce token function, which if we look at that, should be right at the front. Um, so I'm storing a token 
if I, if I don't have it, or if I already have it, great, I just return that. Otherwise, um, uh, otherwise we, we gotta try a couple of things. So I have this function here, uh, get Salesforce code, and this is where, um, this is where it's doing the OAuth handshake with the server, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, it's scoped to the script, or technically the module. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, again, it, I actually didn't have to put that script um, scope in there, but that's probably a holdover. Like when I started working on this, it was just a PS1 file, and I was having collisions, so I put the script scope in there. And yeah, that's what I mean. This is hacked. This is not clean. This is oh, it's working. Let's throw it in the thing and move on. Are there any other questions before I move on? All right. Thanks for thanks for asking as we go. Um, all right. So so I'm trying to acquire the token, um, uh, and I need to get the Salesforce code. So uh, th this is where things get kind of wonky. So um, what I'm actually doing there's a an open source thing called Posh Server, which is an amazing little tool. It's actually a little tiny web server uh, that you can just import and, and host and literally like just um, like I, I import the uh, I import the the module here import module posh server uh, I create a small job script um, that actually starts the server so it doesn't interrupt my session uh, and then um, uh, and inside of that job like right here like that's really all I have to do all I have to call is start posh server um, and I did tell it that I want it to use SSL and tell it what the port is and whatnot. Uh, and then I tell it, what, what's your home directory? Like, where do you live? Um, so one of the things that I, I want you to notice about, um, like this is the web page that Salesforce opened when I authenticated with it, right? And this URL that you see in the, the header, like literally, you know, go to HTTPS colon whack whack home port uh, 8898. That's configured, I configured that on Salesforce for my access token. I had to go in there and say, this is the URL I want you to use when I authenticate to return the token back to me. Uh, and if you look at the code in here, I'm actually opening the server and having it run on port 8898 using SSL, right? Uh, and the real trick is, is telling it, you know, there's this home directory I want you to use, which um, turns out to be uh, this folder. It's, just a, it's one of my modules folders, yeah. Well, I run it as a job. Uh, let me put that code back up there. So, um, yeah, so I, uh, you know, that job script variable actually contains a script block that starts the server, right? But I haven't run the script block yet. Uh, the script block, you got a couple of parameters. Where are you passing those parameters to the script block? Right, right here. So, um, so one of the things, that, so I, I define the job script that I want to use to start the server, and then I need to gather the configuration data, which I do right here. So where where does the server live? Well, I, I you know what's the server's home directory? Uh, I basically figure out well where where is this Bosch server module installed, uh, and then go to a, up a relative path to this folder OAuth local server. Find that path. Like that's that's the folder I want you to use as home. All right. So once I find that, uh, then I'm able to start the job right here, um, and tell it you know start the job with these two parameters, and, and it's actually the same value, but. Um, you know, the first one is the home directory, right? So server home dir gets passed in as home directory there, which is then passed to start posh server and the job, um, right? So all of that mess literally is just to start this asynchronous web server um, on my local machine uh, that's based in that directory, right? Uh, any other questions about that before I, before I dig a little further? Uh, so one, you know, the other thing I want you to notice is that inside of the the address bar, the the document it's opening is authorized.ps1, uh, which is a PowerShell script, right? Um, and technically, this is running on my local machine, and it's it's you know it's part of this Posh server context. And if I look at um, if I look at that folder that I'm pointing to as the home folder for Posh server, there's authorized.ps1. Uh, and if we look at it, it it does very little, right? Uh, quite literally. Um, uh, we have a couple of variables here. Posh query. This is stuff that's defined by Posh server. It's all documented really, really well. Uh, but, but basically, that the Posh query is coming in, uh, and I'm just pulling variables out of the, the HTTP request. Like the, in this case, it looks like the query string. 
Uh, I'm looking for a code variable in the query and a state. And if you look at the, uh, there's the code part of the query. And then somewhere down the line, actually, it's right there is the state. All right, so I'm just pulling those things out of the request. Uh, and once I have the code, that's the piece that I need to finish the authentication. All right, so I, I actually write that out to a temporary file that, uh, that I use in my session. And, and no, it's not encrypted. This is hack day, OK? This is not um, uh, enterprise solution day. So um, yeah, so, so I, I write the code out to a file. Uh, and then once I've done that, uh, I have all the pieces I need. Like, that's all you have to do, right? Uh, and I have all the pieces I need that I can actually talk to the Salesforce server as Jim Christopher, right? <laughs> so as I've authenticated, um, I've given my permission to use this client to Salesforce, and I've gotten the code back, and I'm ready to go. Right, so, um, so once I have that code, once I know it's on disk, um, All right, so yeah, so once I have the server set up and that exchange is ready to happen, I, I just open up, I just create a process that starts the authentication process. Uh, and again, the OAuth URI is defined locally. Um, and that's, that's just the, that's the URI that Salesforce documentation told me to use to authenticate over OAuth. And again, you know, OAuth, the spec is, is it's not thick. It's, it's not a lot of fun to read. Uh, unless you're a web developer and you're really into that kind of stuff. Uh, so, you know, again, I was looking for a really quick, uh, fast solution, and this was, this was it. Um, so, I mean, and just to you know, give you an idea, how many of you are developers in the room? How many of you consider yourself software developers, right? How long would it take you to set up an OAuth server, like using a, a common library, right? Like, if you were downloading, like, I, I forget what it what the name of it is, one of the common OAuth libraries that's available on NuGet and you're setting up your own web server, like how long do you think that would take? All right, let me, let me rephrase it. Uh, minutes, hours, days, weeks. Weeks to learn it. Yeah, which actually that, that is true. Like understanding it's um, not a lot of, it's, it's not easy. Um, like I would say if you're lucky, hours, right? Uh, days is probably more, a more accurate, um, uh, a more accurate, uh, guess, um, but since since PowerShell is so like close to the bone and just just works, right? I can just set up a server and run that script when when I call you over HTTP and it just works. Um, th this this was part of Hack Day. I got this done in a couple of hours, right? And again, I'm not an OAuth expert, right? I just sort of I've looked at it before and I, I knew how it worked, so uh, I walked into it with that knowledge. Yeah. Quick question. Yeah. Um, I developed a, a Twitter PowerShell module. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's all they call them workflows, and it's all it just varies. So like there's there's OAuth, there's the, and I can't remember the names of them now, but um, I I just saw the word bearer, and I want to say one of them's the bearer, but I don't think that's that's correct. So but there's like a workflow. It, yeah, there's like a workflow where the user's sitting there, and giving you access. There's a workflow where there is a server to server. There's a workflow uh, where you know what I mean. So it, it's um. Uh, yeah, it's it's kind of a mess. Uh, to understand. I mean, it's, it's actually, I think the thing is fairly well thought out, but it's kind of a mess to understand. Uh, so that was the, that was like the biggest part of Hack Day, was trying to figure out um, how to get this web-based authentication to work from the console. Um, and like I said, I mean, it works. Uh, I'm not going to lie to you, I'm surprised it works. Like, you, you saw me like during the demo, like, well, maybe, maybe not, you know. Well, oh, forgot to run it as administrator, so it's not going to work. Um, but literally, like once we have that 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 token, that active token variable, and that that handshake is set up, I'm done. I don't have to worry about OAuth anymore for the rest of my session. I can use any of these other APIs. So if we go back, like the original source of the conversation was, um, you know, we're searching Salesforce, which came down to this this function get Salesforce object, uh, and this is basically the front end to their REST API, you know, being able to hit their servers. Right, so I just use the Salesforce token, and um, I just do an HTTP get on that URI that I have for that object, or in this case, it's the search. Uh, and then, like I said, once I have that code, it just works. I can get the data back and forth. Um, you know, the nice thing is once that nut was cracked, 
with um, you know I was able to authenticate with Salesforce, which was the big one, right? That was you know, that's that's supposed to be where we're going to get our information from. So if I can get information from Salesforce, I know it's accurate. Um, uh, that was in air quotes for the recorded recording watchers. Um, but you know, once I had that working, all of a sudden it worked for Trello too. Like I could do this, I could just employ the same code for Trello and, um, oh, Smartsheet uses OAuth. So that suddenly, uh, you know, became open to me. But, you know, it, it just became this really neat thing where like all of a sudden it's like, yeah, okay, I can pull data from, from Salesforce uh, into PowerShell and I can pull data from Trello into PowerShell. And that was, that's always sort of the first automation step for me is gather, you know, I want, I want information to come to me. I want objects to come to me. Uh, and then the next step is sort of the reverse of that, which is scatter, right? I want to be able to reach out to Trello and create a new board, and I want to be able to touch, you know, the cards on the board. Um, and that was like, that was my goal for Hack Day. Like, I wanted to be able to, to take data from Salesforce and manipulate it in the shell and then create something in Trello based on that data, um, right? So, I mean, I, at this point, you know, you guys are driving this. We got about 15 more minutes. Um, so I could either show you that, I could show you pulling data out of Salesforce and turning it around and putting it in Trello um, in an automated way. Uh, we could look at some more of the authentication code. We could look at how I'm wrapping the REST APIs. What's, what's of interest here? Yeah, so that, this is actually, I'm sorry? Uh, well, I mean, this, it's actually just part of the Salesforce API. Like Salesforce is this huge dynamic schema. Like, I mean, it's literally, like I don't, it's, this is why I don't understand it, right? The, Salesforce comes into a company like, our schema is completely dynamic and you can do anything you want with it. Well, the same thing is true of the code I haven't written yet. Like if we, like I don't know what, I don't know how to sell that, right? <laughs> um, th thank, you, thank you for laughing, by the way. Um, uh, but, yeah, so, so like that query syntax is just, it's just part of, um, of the Salesforce API. It's what they support. So they're like, when you, when you go in there, like, I want to look for accounts or account tags or, you know, whatever schema thing I've created. And, um, and it, it, the best part is like the, the syntax is just different enough from SQL to, to be annoying. And you have to remember like some little tiny details. Like this case is very simple. It's, it's identical, but they've got some special things in there, magic things, things that should be. No, it is like that. If if I actually had a schema set up in SQL Server, I could run that query, um, and uh, it would work, right? But the, the, in most cases, it's it's not. It's a little bit different. One thing that I struggle with whenever I created that, that Twitter module was actually generating the signature, the OAuth signature to actually pass. Yeah. That was an enormous pain. How did you do that? In um, this? I'm not. Actually, no. Um, there's in and again, it's part of the workflows whether you have to do that or not. And I. I I, I just lucked out and, you know, Trello, uh, Trello is a little bit different actually. Trello, I was able to set up, I was able to get a token for my, um, I'll, I'll show you that right now. I was able to get a token for my account that's, that's time-based, right? So I actually can go to the browser and type in a URL uh, in, in Trello and it, in, in return, it comes back to me with this really long access code, but that was, that's what I was removing from this code was, you know, this, the value of this token, which again, this is hack day. Uh, not an enterprise software day, um, but I was able to to acquire that a priori. Not not all APIs support that, but yeah, that's actually the biggest one of the biggest issues is the cryptography aspect of it because it's it, it, well, it is a nightmare because you're you know we're used to working especially as scripters we're used to working with text right, and really yeah, you're not working with text you're working with encoded bytes and. Well, it's not just encoded, it's the order of the encoding, you know, and so now all of a sudden, um, you know, you, you, you hash something on Windows, a string, hello world, and you pass it to the Linux server and it tries to compare that to your hashed password and they're different because your bytes are little Indian and theirs are big Indian or vice versa or whatever it is, you know. Um, I hit that like all the time and it's so frustrating. That, and, and honestly, I'm, I'm kind of surprised that we just haven't fixed that yet. That that is not a solved problem. Um, Did you have to worry about parameter order, like when you were doing a, like a, a rest of the or whatever? Uh, typically not. Like um, so, for example, this is a um, uh, this is actually this function get Trello authorization token. 
uh, this is this is I created a function to get that that long string that I need to, to access it. And if you look at the um, uh, you know if you if you look at the the parameters here again, it's just the URL, right? And and it's sort of the same thing. You sort of encode the parameters uh, with names and values. So as long as the names are right, uh, it seems to be okay. Um, uh, was that was that your question? All right. Yeah, so, and, and you know, most REST APIs are that way. It's, it's very rare that you have like an unnamed parameter in a, in a REST API. It's very, they're very strict on the names. Um, but you can see like on Hack Day, I actually thought, yeah, I should probably use the, the data protection API to secure that token that you can use to access all of my Trello data. Yeah. Uh, yes, I could. So, um, well, let's um, actually let, let's try this. So, if I, yeah, don't look. By the way, I'm gonna have to change these now. I didn't realize these were in here. I'll have to change these now. Um, so, I'm gonna define my app key, and then what I'm gonna do is um, gonna copy this URL. I'm just right now. I'm just verifying that. All right, the app key got in there. Um, so, like, if I What's actually happening, and the reason I, I don't do a web request, um, this is why, shoot. So what happens, well, it's on the, it's on the clipboard now, right? Yeah. Let me pipe that to the clipboard real quick. What actually happens when you go to that URL uh, for Trello, and again, this is part, this is not sort of a standard workflow. This is, this is something that Trello does uh, on its own. Um, it comes back with this. Like this is part of OAuth. Do you want to, do you want this to happen or not? Do you want to allow access or not? And I say yes, absolutely allow. Um, and instead of like delivering something that's machine readable, which is what normally happens in OAuth, sort of posts back to a URL, uh, it just dumps this web page on me. Um, and uh, and the reason why is because like this token is not really um, it's not really in, like an official OAuth code in the sense in the sense that it's just a it's an API access token that that Trello is using to um, to give me access for a certain period of time. Uh, so I actually have to copy that out either into my session or into the code. Like I probably go into the HTML and pull it out, but um, I just I opted not to do that. Um, again, I was trying to get like multiple things working, so I was trying to find a common ground. But where's the code? Um, let's see what else. What other questions you guys have? Yeah. So um, yeah. So I mean, most part, like these days, it's really easy because you know PowerShell includes the invoke REST method. Like you know, when I, when I do when I call get Trello board, uh, literally what's happening is it's it's just invoking this URL, right? Um, and since I invoke REST method, it sort of looks at the headers that are coming back and figures out you know what. What's the structure of the data? Is it XML? Is it JSON? And pulls out the necessary bits and makes them PowerShell objects that you can use on the pipeline. Um, uh, you know, the, the only interesting thing that happens, really, um, I mean, it, you know, it's hard to do that when invoke REST method isn't there. <laughs> there's, a, there's actually quite a bit of, of stuff that has to happen uh, to get it working the same way. Um, No, oh, that's that's interesting. So like I, I've never seen that. So like they'll actually put in like a throw error at the start of the JSON just to keep someone from running it. I've never seen that, but um, that's very interesting. That I, that again, it feels feels kind of hackish. It feels like the um, oh like the way they used to comment out like certain certain things in JavaScript in the browser, and but they would magically just sort of be interpreted. You know, that's kind of what that feels like. But um, but no, I've never I've never encountered that. I mean, there there is some weirdness, um, like the Salesforce uh, JSON that was coming back was not I, I couldn't I couldn't parse it. It wasn't parsing automatically, so I actually had to go. F I found this code online um, that actually manually deserializes the JSON into uh, and again I don't remember where I got it from. I didn't I didn't mark it down, but yeah, so I had to do there it is. Parse out the first line and then do the first 
Yeah. And it, it was something very similar to that. Like, the Jason they're returning wasn't really Jason. It had something wrong with it. But they were like, we're Salesforce, you know? Um, and and it was it was something like so silly as like the type of quote they were using or something like it, you know it was just um and unfortunately like when you're using invoke rest method there's no intercept of you know you can't get the data coming back oh let me just change all the quotes and then turn it to json it doesn't work that way you know it just it does it all or it doesn't work at all um so i had to i had to handle all that which is kind of a pain in the butt but again it's powershell so i can just take that c sharp code and drop it right in there and and run it as my own uh, so the Trello, the Trello API is a lot cleaner. Um, they, they've done a really good job with it, actually. Um, uh, and again, you, you can see like a lot of the code here. Like when you start getting into actually doing things, like creating a new Trello board, it's actually really, really simple. Uh, you invoke REST method. There's the URI I want to hit. Um, it's a post method, and the body is the authentication stuff that I have, which is that auth variable, and you know the parameter, the name of the board that I want to create. Um, and again, you know, if I let's see, right? So I'm creating a Trello board with the name um, PSH Summit. And so I'll go ahead and run that. And it returns back the object that it created, right? But if I go over to my uh, go over to my Trello boards, and if I look at my boards now, there it is, P PSH Summit. You know. Um, and do something really silly like you know from zero to twenty, um, you know for each of those let's do a uh, new Trello card uh, where the name is you know item whatever. Uh, oh no, it's we have to do. Let's see, we'll do uh, just copy that. No, that, that wasn't right. Uh, is it ID? Nope. It might have had too many Ds in Oh, interesting. Well, you know, it's... Um... In, in a primary name. Oh, really? Yeah, I, I think you called it Warden. Oh, okay. I could be wrong. Could not find the board the card belongs to. Um, oh, it's interesting. So let's see, did it actually do anything? Nope. Um, anyway, yeah, so, uh, this is, again, it's been been a while. So I've used this. Let's try this. If I do a get Trello board uh, where the name matches PSH Summit. <coughs> Yeah, so I found the board, and then now that I have the board, I want to create, um, do a new Trello card. Oh, God, thank you. <laughs> it would have been a, a really nice surprise at work. Uh, Jim? No? Yeah. Uh, what, Mike? Uh, what? Why would you think it was me? Which is like, that's one of my favorite things about automation, right? And people talk about automating things. I'm like, yeah, it's like the best way to like be wrong at scale, you know? Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, this is fine. Uh, okay, I, I, I don't know why it's not doing it. Um, um, swear it worked, swear. But uh, yeah, again, this is one of those things where it's, it's a hack, so you know, I, I probably changed something in the gets and now it's not working, so. Um, let's see, what else can we talk about? We have about five minutes. Is there any other questions about? So are you gonna show us the automation from Salesforce to Trello? Well, I'd love to, <laughs> but. Uh, um, well, in that hack world, you know, kind of hacky thing, you know, just the idea of, you know, oh, I know building your own objects and integrating different systems. So you gotta, you know, creating your own custom object to get some data from here and put it there. And, yeah. You know, just the what are some kind of tips and tricks on trying to build that framework? Yeah. So like the big thing, um, like you, you'll get objects back. Like okay, Trello is a great example. Trello returns objects 
and most of them are very useful. Um, but their API is, is kind of convoluted when you start asking questions about the cards. Like, what happened to this card? Um, like, the, like, the simplest question would be, when was the card created? Right? That's an easy question. You would think a lot of people would be asking that. Uh, and in fact, they are. Um, and they're like, well, there's no field for that, but the data is in there. Um, and it's like literally like, because we use Mongo, the ID for the card, the first eight characters, like here, let me show you the code. The first eight characters uh, are actually, let's see, where is it? You know, the first eight characters are, um, are actually the Unix encoded timestamp of the thing. So you could just pull that out and yeah, that's exactly what this is. So they're like, you know, oh, we need the time the card was created. So instead of just giving you that data, uh, we're going to tell you to go into the ID and parse out the first eight bytes or the first eight numbers, uh, which is a hexadecimal number, which is actually the Unix timestamp of when that card was created. See? Easy, right? And like, why don't you just have a field in there that's like card created, you know? Um, so there's little things like that are really, really annoying. Uh, and anytime I encounter something like that, I wrap them in something like this. Like I have this add Trello field, and you'll notice that like every time, or almost every time, um, I'm returning like a card, I pipe the results that I get from Trello through this add Trello fields to just create that simple wrapper around that difficult data. Uh, that, and that's very common. Like once you have like the base structure working, like okay, I'm getting the objects back, um, you start spending a lot of time just sort of growing the, uh, the convenience functions, right? Um, because that's, that's why we're doing this. Yeah. Um, so do you have a question or just wanted to see it? I just wanted to see it. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Which by the way, uh, I've written this this particular code like, you know, getting a getting a, a uh, like transferring <laughs> like from a Unix timestamp to a date time. I've I've probably written that line of code like a hundred times. <laughs> Uh, I don't think so. That, not that I'm aware of. What's that? There is? Uh, well, who knew? Well, you did, actually. You knew. <laughs> so, uh, all right, can you, will you show me that later, actually? Right, thanks. Start looking, because, um, right. <laughs> You're on the clock. Yeah. Before you push the button. All right. Um, so yeah, I mean, I know this has been a very organic session, and I'm just trying to show you things that are interesting, um, uh, things that were very difficult to figure out, and I'm very happy that I figured out. The OAuth thing is the big one, right? Um, uh, it sounds like I'm getting the impression, like, that there's like a vapor that a blog post about that might be worthwhile, right? Because you're not going to remember anything. <laughs> like, he showed me this posh server thing. OK, so I'll write up a blog post about that, right? And I'll, I'll send out a tweet. I'll hash it with PSH Summit. And um, uh, in fact, you know, I might just work on that this morning. So look for that later today. Yeah? So there's clearly lots of value in this. Um, I'm curious how you expose it to others in your organization. Um, what your thoughts are on it. Yeah, uh, it's a great question. So it is very powerful. Um, one of the nice things is that you know OAuth is um, it, it's tenant focused. So like you you're using you're like I'm me. I'm Jim Christopher when I'm using Trello even from the console. So when I give it to somebody else, like they're them, and then they can touch their stuff, but they can't touch mine, and I'm okay with that. You know, um, the only one that I, that I worry about is Salesforce. But then you know the more I think about it, like, well, really you can't do anything from the console. You can't do in the UI. You know the the sort of the, the counter to that is you can't mess up anything in the console that you can't mess up in the UI. So if they have access to it and they can mess it up, I'm you know that's that's kind of my out. Um, generally, there's very few people who actually use this, right? What what happens now is we'll get into a situation where you know we'll be talking in a in a uh, in a meeting. It's like, well, we got all this data in Salesforce. If only we had it, you know, in a spreadsheet to do this. So like, and like, hey, you know, Jim, can you can you get Amelia on that? And I'm like, oh, I just did it while you were talking. <laughs> like, you know, it's like. It just that's what this is for. Um, so we're, we're out of time. Uh, I do. I did figure out uh, why this wasn't working. So we have cards, but the cards have to live on a board. So I have to get the list of boards uh, from the thing, and I'll get the one that where the name uh, matches to do. 
All right, so I get that, and then what I'm going to do is create a new Trello card uh, with a name. Um, hello. Yeah, so there it worked. And then if I go back here, it's it's there. Um, but that's you know that's the thing. That's the, the thing I love about PowerShell is like I just created a new Trello card, and I could have created it based on dynamic dynamic data. It doesn't care where that data came from, right? So if I can get data out of Salesforce, now all of a sudden I can get it into Trello. If I can get data out of SQL or that spreadsheet or that file, I can get it wherever I need it to go. Uh, and that that's why that's why I keep that's why I keep focusing on PowerShell for automation is because I can do that, right? And it sort of magically works. You know, you get like all this stuff for free. Like literally, like the people. Somebody literally asked me once, like, well. What if I have like a set of Azure VMs with names, and I wanted to take their names and uh, use those to create SQL tables? I'm like, I, yeah, I guess you know if you need to do that, uh, yeah, you can do use PowerShell to do that. I guess that's that's fine. Have fun with that. So, all right. So, uh, thank you guys for coming. We're out of time. I got to change my secrets and my keys for Trello because I just exposed them, and they're and they're uh, they're on they're on they're going to be on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah, right now? Let me push the button. Is that okay? Yeah. All right.